So this is the NATO phonetic alphabet program that we have written some days back. I hope you remember it. Otherwise, we just go through the code. You will understand it. So now let's run it and give a give an example. Let's give a read. So we got the NATO phonetic alphabet for R A B A. Okay. So now there is a chance that there might be an exception in this code when you try to give something other than letters in the alphabet. For example, run it again. If I give some letters in numbers instead of letters. Then I got key error. Now where did I get this key error? Is when you are accessing the dictionary here, inside the dictionary when you are trying to index it using a letter, it is working. But if you are trying to index it using a number, then there is an exception. So when there is an exception, I don't want the program to crash. I want to handle it. So let's try to use try, try accept and else. In the accept is we are accepting we are expecting a key error that is why accept is key error. Let's display a message. Sorry, only letters in the alphabet, please. So whenever user enters anything other than letters, he is going to see this message. Sorry, only letters message. Okay. And now, if there is no error, we are going to print the output list. If there is an error, then we are going to go to accept. If there is no error, then we are going to print the output. Okay. So let's try to give a number. Now we got saying that sorry, only letters, and then the program has exited. We don't want that. What we want is. It should say sorry only letters in the alphabet, and again it should ask for a word until the user enters a right word. It should keep on asking. So we need a kind of a loop. A while loop will be better, but better than while loop, we will use recursion here. So we are going to put everything in a function. This entire thing in a function called generate phonetic. And now we are going to call that function. And now, whenever there is a key error, we want to repeat this entire part again once more, one more time. That is why inside the except, we are going to write that method. So, are you understanding it? So, whenever there is a key error. This message is going to be displayed, and again the same function is going to be called, and again it is going to ask enter a word. If again if there is a letter, you know, numbers or something else entered, then again it will go into this exception. Again, again it will try to ask for the word. <coughs> Now let's let's enter numbers. It is saying sorry, only letters in the alphabet, please. Again it is asking a word. So let us give number again. Again, it is saying sorry, only letters in the alphabet. Enter a word, so it will be in a loop, continuous recursion. Okay. So now, if I give a valid one, then it is going to print the output and it is going to exit. So this is how you can handle exceptions wherever you feel that there will be exceptions. You can handle them this way. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Let's now visit the password manager program again. So we want to add a new functionality to password manager, which is called search. So we have added a new button. I mean, we didn't add it, but this is how the output is going to look like. We will do it. So we have we are going to add a search button. Now, whenever you give any website and any password, later if you give the name of the website and if you click on search, that password should be seen. For example, let's give a website Flipkart. And let's generate a password and let's add it. And now in this search, again if I give Flipkart, and if I click on search, then it is going to show me what is the email ID and what is the password for Flipkart. Okay, so how do I implement search? Earlier you have seen that the entire data is stored in data.txt, a text file. 
Inside a text file when you have data, it is very difficult for you to search. Therefore, we are going to use JSON object notation, sorry, JavaScript object notation, which is JSON. So now we are going to store the data inside the file in JSON notation so that later searching on JSON notation will be easy. Okay. So what is JSON notation? It is just like a dictionary in Python. You can JSON, you can in some way you can compare a JSON to a dictionary in Python. Okay. Now <clears throat> so in order to write something onto the uh, file using JSON notation. There is JSON module available and the method is dump. If you use dump, it is used for writing something onto the file. Uh, writing that JSON, JSON format or that uh, JSON object onto the file. And if you want to read a JSON object, then load is going to be the command or load is going to be the method. And if you want to update an existing JSON, then update is available. Okay. So let's go to the program that we have written earlier. Yeah, here. So let's delete this is okay message box for now. It will, it will be confusing for you otherwise. Let's simplify the code. So here also you have to delete is okay. Okay. So now instead of append mode, we are opening the file in append mode. So we will open it in write mode. So what happens is whenever a JSON object is created and it is stored in the file, you cannot append to the JSON object by using the normal append. The reason is one more JSON object will be created separately. We don't want that to happen. Always we want to store the data in JSON format and again read the data in JSON format and in that data we want to do the modifications or updations and again store that data that, that uh, JSON format inside the file. So we don't want to, are you understanding this? If you have a file, if I am going to write a JSON object into the file and again if I create a second JSON object into the file, then the search is not going to work well. So you have to have a single JSON object and so that the search will work well. So we are changing .txt to JSON and this write which you are using, we are not going to use that, we are going to use dump. When you are working with JSON, you are going to use dump instead of write. So import JSON, JSON module is imported. Now we are going to use json.dump Now what is that we are going to dump is first create the json object and you are going to dump that So for that we are creating a new dictionary So json is nothing but a dictionary in python Okay So we are creating a new dictionary called new data And the dictionary format is initially it is a dictionary inside it there is a key called website whatever your website name is that is the key and as a value we are going to have one more dictionary see that so a dictionary within a dictionary so this is a dictionary within a dictionary and now website name is going to be the key and for that value, there is a dictionary which has email as the key and the actual email and password as the key and the actual password. So whatever data we have, we got from the user, we are going to create a dictionary in, which is nothing but a JSON object and we are going to store it. that new data whatever we got we are going to store it in the data file so here data file is data.json now let's try to add an entry here
Now open the file JSON file. A JSON file is created here. Data dot JSON. There you can see data dot JSON got created. Now let's open it. Now you can see that the data is not in pure text format. It is in format of a uh, JSON. Okay, so which is nothing but a dictionary. So Amazon is the name of the uh, key here, first key, and its value is email and its value is again a dictionary which is having key as email and password and value as what is the uh, email and password. Now when you have this format, it will be easy for you to retrieve the data according to what you want. For example, if you want email, you got it here. If you want password, you got it here. Website, you got it here. So searching and retrieving data will be very easy. In fact, transferring the data in JSON, JSON format is very easy. That is why JSON format is widely used over the internet for data transfer. Okay. Now it is not very readable. Let's give some indent to that. So there is a parameter which you can use. Let's delete that data. Here you can give indent. Whenever you are dumping, you can say indent equal to some number, let's say 4. Now the data will be readable. Let's try to give again. Now this data is going to be stored in JSON format. Now the JSON format will be more readable. Yeah, see this, it is more readable now. Amazon is the key and then inside that there is a dictionary. Email is the key, password is the key and the email id and the password are the values okay so now what what we should do is inside this json object we are going to update so the next time user enters the next website and all you have to put it in this particular file only in this particular dictionary we want to put it so now appending to append, appending to this directly file is going to create a new dictionary if you directly use that code that we have written for the second one we are going to create a new dictionary and it is going to be present inside this and there are two json objects we don't want that to happen we want entire thing to be in one json so we will load it every time and we will append to it and again we will rewrite it on the old old data okay Now let's try to read the data and print it from the JSON. So for reading the data from JSON file, the command is json.load. And whatever we have loaded, let's call it as data. And let's try to print the data. Just click on add that is sufficient. Now you can see that the JSON data is printed on the screen, which is not very readable. Okay, but anyway, we are able to read and we are able to show it using load method. So if you want to see what is the format of the data in Python whatever data you read, what is the format of it, what is the type of it, you can give type. Now the type is going to show that it is a dictionary. Now you can see that it is a dictionary. So JSON object is nothing but a dictionary in Python. Okay. Now let's try to modify the code. We will read from the file, update the JSON object and again write the JSON object to the file. So we will read the JSON object from the file and we will update it every time when user adds a new website and then we are going to write it onto the file. So for updating JSON, the command is data dot update
So we are reading from the file and we are updating the file, updating that JSON object. reading the old JSON object, updating the old JSON object and again we are going to write it. Here it is not new data, it has to be data. So change it here, here it is not new data, it has to be data. So if you observe it, we are loading from the file the JSON object and we are calling it data and then we are updating it with the new data. New data is nothing but the dictionary created work. New data is nothing but the dictionary created here. So whatever data is present in the file, JSON file, we are getting that entire data and again we are updating it with the new data and again we are writing it back to the file. But one thing you have to do is when you are writing it to the file, you have to write it in the, you have to open the file in the write mode. Here it is in the read mode. While reading the data, read mode is fine. But while writing the data, you have to write it in the write mode. Check the indentation. View a new website. Now open the JSON file. Now Flipkart is created. Amazon is created. Flipkart is created. If you observe it, both are in the same JSON object. Both are in the same dictionary. If you don't read it, update it and write it, then it is not going to be in the same dictionary. They will be separately created and searching will be difficult. If you want to search, and if you want everything to be the same JSON object, you have to read every time the JSON object. So even when you are doing one update also, you have to read the entire JSON object and you have to update the JSON object with the newly added element and then write the entire JSON object in the JSON file. Then only search will be easy. Otherwise, a lot of JSON objects will be created which will not be in the format of a JSON file. Okay, One JSON file should have only one JSON object. Okay, thank you.